Hi, I'm Velma and I'd like to talk to you about some new rulers that we have and some new tips and tricks about precision with your cutting. Hi, I just want to share a few things with you today about some new rulers that we've gotten in from Creative Grids. The first one I'd like to share with you is called the Big Easy and it is a 12 and a half inch wide ruler by 24 inches long and a lot of you probably think why in the heck would I need a ruler that big? Well it's great for cutting full size strips for one thing because sometimes we just don't have quite enough ruler and we have to put two rulers together. This will give you 12 and a half inches wide for cutting those strips or maybe you want to cut a 12 and a half inch block. It's great for that. It also is good for trimming a quilt because you now, when you cut your edge, you now have 12 inches across there to make a corner, not just a little bit of your ruler and then you have to start turning it. So it's great for doing that as well. And as usual with all the Creative Grids rulers, they have white circles for the whole numbers and black circles for the half numbers. So that way you're not um, trying to remember, oh, do I have it on my half inch side or my full inch side? They're nice and bright so you can see them. Also with the Creative Grids rulers, they have a gripper on the back and it is like a sandpaper almost, but not quite that rough. It's still easy enough to slide around, but it's in very good positioning and also around the quarter inch around the whole outside of the ruler. So that helps it from slipping and that's an important part for accuracy when we're cutting. This one is the eight and a half by 12 and it's one of my very favorite rulers. I keep it on my table all the time. It just gives you, gives you that 12 inch length but you don't have to have that whole big ruler um, beside you. It just gives you a smaller version. Then I want to talk to you about the new left-handed rulers. They are designed for our left-handed people, of course, but if you're looking for them on the wall, they have a turquoise strip at the top, which tells you that that's a left-handed ruler. Right now, there are four different sizes a six and a half by 24, a six and a half by 12, a six and a half inch square, and a 12 and a half inch square. So all your basic rulers that you would need to get started. And again, they've got the nice white circles for the whole increments and the black circles for the half increments. And as you can see here, they're flipped so that it's easy for a left-handed person to use it. You're not always counting backwards trying to figure out which is which. So those are the new Creative Grids rulers. The next thing I'd like to show you is when we're cutting squares, lots of times it's hard to know exactly where that measurement is that we want to see. I'll just slide this underneath so we can pretend this is a, a block. So you're go going to cut a three inch square, but sometimes you're not quite sure, you know, where you're supposed to stop. With these root, um, stickers from GE Designs, they're called G Easy Stickers. They come in three different colors, the pink, the blue, and the green. They are repositionable, so they're easy to take off of your ruler. They leave no res residue, and so it's easy to pick it up and move it to another spot if you're wanting to cut a four inch square instead of a three inch square. So those are nice for using on your rulers. You can also use them on your mat. So if you're using your mat lines, you can easily stick it onto your mat as well. And maybe you wanna put a few around and know that that's where you need to keep your fussy cut piece in the center of that. So those are from GE Designs and they're called G Easy stickers and they do come um, like quite a few on a sheet and lots the three different colors so you you can split them apart if you're doing different measurements so the other thing instead of using the GE stickers are for pinpointing things these are little silicone hearts from Gypsy Quilter and they go on the back side of your ruler so as you can see here, I have the round silicone ones on. These are brand new, they're little hearts. And so the same thing, they are 
to be positioned on the back side of your ruler. And I usually put one in each corner. And sometimes I'll stick one in the middle as well, just to give that center a um, stop so that it won't slip on you. So when you position that on the back and you give it a press, that ruler is not going anywhere. The inside of the heart, as you can see this teeny little heart, they're great for smaller rulers. This is a six and a half inch square, but sometimes you have a two and a half inch square and you don't want this big um, silicone in the way of your numbers. So the little ones come in really handy for that um, so that it doesn't get in the way of your numbers. And the last thing that I'd like to show you is from OmniGrid and it's called OmniGrip. And it is a full sheet, as you can see it's shiny on the back side, a full sheet that's 36 inches long by 12 and a half inches wide. So it will cover up to a 12 and a half inch square, but you can also put pieces on. You don't have to have a full chunk if you don't have that much left over. So I'd like to show you now, I'll put it on the back of one of my um, Studio 180 rulers. They are a shiny back and so there's no grippers like on the Creative Grids rulers. So what you're going to do is you're going to take and put your Invisigrip upside down. Then you're going to lay your ruler on top. I don't know if I have, yeah, I do have enough space here. You're going to lay your ruler on top of the paper and cut. You're going to cut a piece and you want it to be about, I like about a quarter inch smaller than my ruler. So just put your ruler so that you can see a quarter inch all the way around the outside. Let's turn this so it's a little bit easier. And just cut that off so you just have, so now it's at six and a quarter. Then you're going to make sure that your ruler has been cleaned on the back so that there's no residue. It just helps for the static cling of the, um, on the Invisigrip to stick a little better. And then I just try to get this a little bit flat. So now what you're going to do is just move your ruler for a minute. Take your Invisigrip off the paper. Now the side that is attached to the paper is the side that you want on the back of your ruler. So just pull this away. Lay the Invisigrip down and then take the back side of your ruler and you're just going to center it on top. And I can use those lines where I cut and just set your ruler down on top. And then give it a push. And when you flip it over, you can see it on the back side. And then just give it a nice smooth there so that there's no bubbles underneath. And that ruler now gets nice and grippy so that it will not slip again when you're cutting, especially when you're using a square up ruler. When you put your fingers down and you go to trim, you don't want it to be sliding around on you. So with the Invisigrip on the back of a ruler, there's no little areas where it might slip. Just give it a good press, cut, cut, and it works really slick. Thanks for watching my demo on the rulers that I've shown you today. And to those left-handed people out there, I hope these rulers come in handy for you. We've learned a little bit about the accuracy that you need with your rotary cutter and your ruler. And these tips and tricks will help when we get started with our new quilting projects.